Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. We're going to start today's episode taking you through a couple games I streamed on the channel over the weekend. That stream is available if you want to check it out. And here we have the A's taking on the Texas Rangers. Ken Waldachuk on the mound comes in with an ERA above six. One of those young guys I really want to see step up. Saws off Bubba Thompson there at the first pitch of the game and ends up putting together a very good first inning. We go bottom one, A's with two down, man on second, and Seth Brown hooks one into the right field corner to put the A's up 1-0. But the Rangers in the third, two on, one down, and Nate Lowe's been swinging the bat really well to start the year. Base hit left field, a runner coming around and scoring from second. Tying the game at one. Followed up, Marcus Simeon skips one off the mound and into center field. A second run scores. Waldachuk still in trouble. Base is loaded, nowhere to put Matthias, and he walks in a run. He gave up three in that inning, but would bounce back. You get a lot of inconsistency from these young pitchers, especially with the low ratings they have. The one thing Waldachuk had going for him in this game was his stuff seemed up to par. It was really just that one inning that got away from him, but otherwise, he picked up seven strikeouts in four and two third innings and walked two, allowing three runs. He was relieved by J.P. Sears, who has been one of our better pitchers, and he's played a very important role because our starters aren't going deep. We need good long relief guys, and Sears could be one of those for us. He came in, shut things down in the fifth, in the 6th, finishes off the 7th by striking out Nate Lowe and came back for the 8th inning and finished that one off as well. Sears goes 3 and a third out of the bullpen, only allowing one hit and striking out 3. But the A's down 2, Diaz in the bottom of the 8th inning, that's drilled the left center and Oakland Coliseum barely contains it. He gets into second. Two on here for the A's, and Jace Peterson, base hit center field. That scores one, and the A's now down by just the one. Two on, Aguilar up the middle, base hit. This ties the game at three, energizing the crowd at least temporarily behind the A's. We head into the ninth, all tied at three. Zach Jackson has had his struggles this year. He's allowing an opposing batting average over 300. He came into this game with only three walks. He walked the first two batters he faced and then walked Bubba Thompson to load the bases. He saw four batters. We pulled them for Trevor May, who's actually put together pretty good numbers on the season. Lefties are hitting 100 against him. And of course, Leody Tavares hits a base hit to left field and the Rangers go up two on an RBI single. Immediately following, a blast to right center field. And Nate Lowe leaves the building a three run shot. Five in the ninth for Texas, and they win this game. Final score, eight to four. We rally late just to get crushed in the end anyway. JP Sears, the only pitcher to get through this one cleanly. The ratings are in for Shintaro Fujinami, and I have taken the ratings from the official MLB roster, and I have applied them to his player here in this franchise. I can't edit his weight. He's actually a lot lighter than 216, but that doesn't make much of a difference here. We lose the next two games to the Rangers, so it would be nice to just take the last game of a four-game set. Fujinami coming off his best start of the year, by the way. I was excited to see what he could do in this game. Bubba Thompson leads off and legs out a leadoff double. Two batters later, Corey Seager hooks one into the right field corner past Loriano, and Thompson scores easily. Rangers on the board quickly and far from finish. This one is off the leg of Fujinami, and Diaz almost gets him. That brings up Adolis Garcia, and that ball's hit a ton. Deep left, three-run homer, and a four-run first for Texas. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if it were only four runs. 
Three more hits. Low to the bases. Josh Young, slow base hit up the middle past Tony Kemp. Two runs score. It's still not over. Six to nothing. The lineup has turned over. Thompson to right. Second hit of the inning. Seven to nothing. And that would be it for Shintaro Fujinami. This after a game in which he went seven innings and had a phenomenal start in the simulation. Seven nothing. But the A's would still be energized for the bottom of the first with the first two reaching and Aledmus Diaz cashing in for the first run of the day. We didn't want this to be necessarily over just because of a seven run first. We fight back with four straight hits to open the bottom of the first inning. We get two runs, but quickly start running out of steam. Ramon Laureano down on strikes. Jordan Diaz hitting 229, right back to Dane Dunning, who starts a double play to finish off the first. A five-run game seemed a bit more manageable. Offenses would stay silent until the sixth inning. Sam Maul gives up a long one to Corey Seager, a three-run shot. Texas goes up 10-2. Before this one was over, Seth Brown would send one down the right field line. Keeping it fair off the foul pole for a two-run home run. The A's would need six more. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Lawrence Butler. Hard hit to second base and doubled up as the Texas Rangers take all four from Oakland in relatively easy fashion, blowing us out in these four games. It has not been pretty for this team. I still can't believe we're not in last place but it sure feels like it. As I described during the stream, this feels like I'm playing with an expansion level roster. So welcome into episode five, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the series so far. I have certainly enjoyed the, the challenging start and setting the foundation for what hopefully becomes a really fun series that eventually sees some level of success. Here in Season 1, the A's currently sit at 11-31, and, and again, this is not the worst record in all of baseball somehow. The Mariners have been just as bad, maybe worse than us. We are the two lowest batting average teams in all of baseball, and two of the three lowest scoring. We are no longer in dead last there, thankfully. I thought we'd be even lower in home runs, but tied for 22nd right now. And it should come to no surprise that we are last in Team ERA, and it's not particularly close. After 10 starts, I wanted to evaluate our pitching and see if maybe some of these players should get more time at AAA instead. So far, it's not looking good. Pitchers like Kyle Muller are not seeing really any development right now through the first month and change of the season. So we may end up turning this rotation over. Paul Blackburn has easily been one of our best players on the team, definitely our best starting pitcher, and it looks like he's picking up where he left off after an all-star campaign last year. He already has more quality starts than a year ago, but still is trending in the wrong direction with strikeouts, and just based on his career marks, I don't think that's ever going to be a big strength. Yeah, 52K per nine will do that to you. Around a quarter of the way through the season, our RBI leader, well, three leaders, 17 would lead this team right now. And six home runs for Ramon Laureano puts him in first place. Going to the war metric to determine just the value of these players. Aledmus Diaz leads us with a .9. And that's really who he's been throughout his career. His numbers are really right in line with his history. All right, so we have to do some scouting here. We're in week seven. We're halfway through this and approaching the Major League Draft. Cam Cope's scouting profile is now finished. We have him at 58th on the big board. And based on the feedback I've seen so far, I think that the board I want to pay the most attention to is going to be our board and not the MLB Draft rank. I plan on drafting based on our big board and not trying to be perfect in the draft and say, I can get this guy later. Let's draft somebody else before him. I'm going to take my favorite players when their draft rank for us really tells us to do that. 
Right now, our number one rated player would be Aaron Dunn. He is a center fielder prospect, 18 years old, so very young, and that's going to give you a wide range with his potential and overall. And I guess that even though we have him fully scouted, there is still some risk that this is like an inaccurate profile and he's actually a lot lower rated. It's the risk you take with 18 year olds in the major league draft. Ken Willis is the second ranked player. He's a relief pitcher and I, I never really know when the right time to take a reliever is because they just don't have the, the same value there to a team. But I really like this like team draft ranking and Every team is going to rank players differently. I've seen some videos using 30 team control and teams will not view players all the same. It's really cool how teams are valuing certain things more than others. I've been really liking this more blanket scouting that we've been doing as well. We have eight shortstops from this last session. Some of them coming in pretty highly ranked on the board as well. I'm looking for like big outliers in terms of all right, we're way lower than the major league board is or way higher. It'll probably be wise for us to have full scouting profiles on like at least the top five to 10 players on our board to give us the best options for that first pick. And maybe we'll have a chance to take one of those players with our second pick. We'll see how that works. Patrick McCain, shortstop, he's 21 years old. And still a, a pretty wide range on the potential and overall, but I think that's because we're only at 40%. Looks like just hitting in general looks really good. And the fielding is elite, and you get speed as well. There's a lot to like here with Patrick McCain. We're also getting a bunch of information on these relievers after last week, and a lot of these 30-40%. We're going to spend some more time scouting Jorge Serrano. And we'll do the shortstop central scouting for another week, but I'll have our lower efficiency scout work on Patrick McCain, and the combination of these two should wrap up his profile. We'll have that done, and then a bunch more shortstops will be higher. So I definitely like doing this more blanket-focused scouting, and I think you're going to give yourself significantly more options than if you're focusing on players individually, especially early on. So that is done for week seven. We continue on with the 11 win A's. Here in year one, I would like to give us a chance to see a lot of different teams that we're facing. There's another week of losing. We've done that a couple times already. We got Houston here if we want to see them. We can play them in the end of May or right now. I say we work on getting through the entire month here and we're already time to scout again. So Patrick McCain, third on our board, fifth on the MLB board, so he would be an option with our very first pick. And I just wanted to have some choices there, but a 10-point range there on the potential and overall. He looks really solid. Looking for a big bonus, though, a lot more than Cam Cope. And then Jorge Serrano, we have him slightly higher than what the MLB board has. Potential is going to be a C. But relievers, I don't really worry about having high potential there too much. Like bullpens aren't typically made up of 80 and 90 overall players. Everybody's got like four 70 somethings that go out and throw an inning. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. And I think that, you know, Serrano being 111. I mean, what would that be for our selection here? Like our fourth or fifth? I think that's fine. But I want to see how we're doing here on all this scouting for the shortstops. Now that we've done this twice, we see a lot of 50, 70. A lot of these are close to being done. Wow, we're way lower on Robert Sims, it looks like. With uh, lower power, I guess, projected for him. I'm not quite sure what to do with players that are ranked in the 20s because... We have our options for the top 10. I can't trust that these players will be there at 38 or 40. It's nice having those picks close together, but I really like Pablo Portillo and what we're seeing early on here. Could have 99 power against righties. I'm looking specifically right now for switch hitters. He looks like a potentially elite prospect. So he's from Ohio. I could scout the right fielders in the central region and start to get some more info that way. 
but I'd like to find some more switch hitters, hopefully. So here's the plan for week eight. We're looking for more outfielders and relievers because I don't have enough information on the top guys. We'll sim through another entire week. We actually have a three game winning streak here against Seattle of all teams, of course. I don't know why they are so bad this season, but I wanted to play with Paul Blackburn and play against the Astros. I gotta pay more attention too to the waiver wire. It's like you have to go into transactions and pending to see who's been waived. And uh, I don't want to claim anybody here, but I'm sure opportunities will show up. They have five guys hitting 300. We don't have anybody. We probably won't for a few years. Maybe ever, actually. Welcome in, everybody, to today's feature game. We got the A's and the Astros. 15 and 39. At the very least, we're moving through this year very quickly. And here's one player that could be part of our rebuild, Paul Blackburn, 2.38 ERA. Easily our best starting pitcher, just a 1.1 whip. And the strikeouts, I guess, we're going to have to just deal with, you know, low strikeouts. That's fine. But here are the defending champions and the leaders here in the American League West. One of the teams that if we want to compete, we've got to work on uh, beating, obviously. Them, the Angels, the Mariners, if they ever figure things out. And then Texas, if their investments start paying off. Paul Blackburn picks up a quick strikeout of Kyle Tucker. Left that one up and right at Loriano, who will block it. I dove for one of those in the stream and I ain't doing it again. 382, that's all for Jordan Alvarez. Okay. I really enjoyed the stream that I did for uh, the start of this episode. And that's something I want to do, you know, periodically, maybe a couple times a month, but. You know, I'm really trying to put a lot into these episodes without dragging out the season. And that's really the best way. Launch to left. Brown retreating makes the catch. That could have been a whole lot worse. Nice throw. But I really enjoyed doing the stream. Just getting a couple extra games. And I want to do that for the minor leagues. I just want to do that to get more highlights. And that's drilled to right center field. Altuve you might have a run here. Brantley into third, only 19 speed. They wave him around, and he's out by a mile. What was that? How bad do you think we are? Well, we haven't scored a lot this year. Christian Javier is a really good starting pitcher. 3.05 ERA, 52 strikeouts, and 59 innings. Really solid year. We've had trouble scoring more than four runs at a time, so I'd love to see five. But that's a tall order. Now, if you're not really into the streams, those are meant to just be kind of optional content that, you know, if you really want to see more of the A's, you can check out those streams and see full games. I played every pitch of that game where we were starting off down 7 nothing in the first five minutes. But if you want to skip those, I don't think you're going to miss out on anything because I'm not going to be playing the most key stuff in streams. And it's really just optional. A lot of breaking balls up and I wish I could put one in play. But it feels like the Butler move has worked out so far. He's hit 248 and another high slider puts him away. What's your confidence in that? It's above 50. Man... He's pitching up. There gotta be some chances here to drive. It's so odd seeing Jose Abreu here in an Astros uniform as that one's hit to right center. As a Twins fan, I'm not exactly heartbroken. He's no longer in Chicago, but it's still weird. Seeing if we can pitch around that leadoff double now. We got Bregman hitting 278. Weekly hit, Diaz. Oh, I, I ran right past the ball. And the run's going to score. I've considered playing with auto fielding on just to keep it ratings based and keeping me from uh, screwing things up. I might experiment with it again. 
I, uh, I did briefly in my Rockies franchise, but I, I screwed up some of the settings on there. I like having some level of control, obviously. Like, I want to, you know, control the pitching and the, uh, like the batting side of things. I, I enjoy fielding and being able to make calls on diving or not. So, I guess if you want to see auto fielding, you can let me know. The Guardians just scored 14 runs. That's like a week's worth of work for us. Well, a perfect pitch is not perfect if it doesn't get the call, right? Three and two. Walking, Corey Lee. Runner goes and out at second base. Manny Pena getting the start today. Throws him out. But Blackburn gives up his first run, and it's 1-0 Astros. Way out in front of that curveball to even the count here, 2-2. Two and, two. and Seth Brown is our first base runner. We also have to think about trades once we get past the MLB draft and the trade deadline is to follow. Ramon Laureano is one of those players I think could be on the move. He has one more year of team control left before he's a free agent. There's still, you know, some value. I ran the trade finder on him in the stream. And it seemed like we could get, you know, a mid-60s B potential type of prospect for him from a lot of teams. So, unfortunately, the team may be getting even worse at some point this year, but... Got to be focused on the future, and that requires making those kinds of moves. Hammered to left field, Laureano, deep and gone. I let him get away with way too many hanging sliders. Seven homers on the year for Laureano, that leads the team, and his now 22 RBIs also lead this team. We're just pumping up his trade value right now. Yeah, that was upper third of the zone once again. I don't know why he keeps throwing them up there, but I was bound to hit one. Javier's having a tough inning. He's given up two walks and a home run now. Here's a player we haven't talked about too much. It's the veteran catcher, Manny Pena. Backup catcher as we're playing Shea Langoliers pretty much every day, but catchers need their off days. Right by him at 94. I guess I'm sitting on all the off-speed stuff because he's just been throwing those left and right. Missed inside, and this inning is dragging on for Christian Javier. After a 10-pitch first, he'll need at least 30 pitches to get through this inning. Well, I guess unless we double play right here, but we're not. Third walk. And then the veteran Tony Kemp's only hitting 198. Like, I'd love to find some guys at AAA that can push, you know, Tony Kemp and Jace Peterson and some of these guys that really aren't doing a whole lot for us right now. They're not really young with upside. In a lot of cases, Kemp's going to get doubled up here. He only has 39 speed. And a lot of these guys just don't have potential, and they don't really have a lot of upside. Again, if you're enjoying the action, please leave a like on the video. Those have been very helpful. This series has been uh, performing very well for the channel. A lot better than really anything I've done in a long time. And I'm just trying to make the best MLB The Show franchise that I can. And I'm trying to put together a pretty special series here, as we should have probably hit him there, but we didn't. I should probably be throwing a lot more off-speed here with Blackburn. He does have, like, 99 break. So, can we just throw, like, 40% curveballs and get away with it? Over the head of Loriano, he races back and makes the catch. Dropping in the 12-6. If it can get you strike two, can it get you strike three? There you go. 12-6 on the outer third. My only uh, complaint here of Blackburn in this start is 
I'd like some quicker at bats. You know, this bullpen isn't all that trustworthy, and I'd love to see him get deeper in one of these games for us. And now we're, you know, we're falling behind Brantley here, and probably going to single off this, or if we can't find the zone, then we'll just fall behind and have to pitch to Jordan Alvarez with a uh, runner on. 46 RBIs. That's more than double our leader, Loriano, And he's just missing all over the place. We need a, a mound visit here, dude. What's going on? All right, 12-6. If you leave it up, you're going to be in trouble. Come on. How many straight is that? I might as well just walk him now. And that's what we do. That's eight straight missing. Finally got the zone again. In the dirt, smothered by Pina. Not much speed on the base paths, at least. Altuve, base hit center field. Butler comes up throwing. Brantley waved home, and he will tie the game. Abreu softly into right. Loriano's got it, but the damage is done. Tried turning on that. He is still missing up with that slider. Driven to left field off the bat of Capel. Way back and gone. Opposite field homer and number eight for Connor Capel. I guess that makes him the team leader. Okay. Connor Capel showing off some oppo power. I don't know. Javier just does not pitch down. And I feel like you're going to get a lot of home runs off this guy. Here are all the sliders he's thrown to this point, And there is only one that is in the zone in the lower third. And the ones off the plate aren't really close enough to generate a lot of swings. So, I don't know. I like Christian Javier, but he's playing a very dangerous game here with uh, that slider. That's the best slider he's thrown in the entire game. But unfortunately, it's like his 21st slider. Two and two to Seth Brown. There you go. Strike three. So despite only having two hits at this point, we're winning because those two are home runs. We're making them count. So let's see if Paul Blackburn can bounce back. He's facing bottom of the order. All right, don't leave it there next time. Wow, right down the middle in Bregman. What are you doing? Looking at a hanging curveball and then just a, a 93 fastball dead center to a 4K per nine guy. Right up the middle, base hit center field. Sixth hit for the Astros. All right, that's strike two, the unconventional way. Two and two. Lee strikes out, he went around. And down in the zone to Leone. So I don't know if I want to see Blackburn pitch too much of the fifth. Like, do I let him face Alvarez a third time? Well, if he finishes the at-bat here, 75 pitches? No? Considering our bullpen options, I'll probably let him start the fifth. Unless he can't get out of the fourth. There's a good fastball. There have actually been a few uh, swings and misses on that, you know, just low-speed fastball. On the ground, and Peterson throws it on to first, and we're through with three and a half. I think we're about to see Javier exit this game sometime soon. Driven by Loriano out to deep center field, and that is gone! Second homer of the day for Ramon Loriano. We have three hits, and they're all home runs. His energy's getting down, unlike his slider. 
another one that's just over the plate. A nice, easy one to swing at. Loriano crushing it here in this game. It's 4-2. to two. But his energy is about depleted at this point. I think you got to make a move. Nope. Probably try to get him through the fourth inning here against the bottom of our order. Right up the middle, Aguilar trying to leg out the infield single. Not today. So now we get to enjoy the pressure of trying to protect the lead. <sighs> I got Paul Blackburn in there right now. You know, it's the problem of having, you know, a weak bullpen as well. This is going to be it. Like, we have a bunch of tired relievers. Four innings from a starter is not enough. But what am I going to do? I got four guys fresh for this game. So, you know, Sam Mall, eventually I wasn't going to let him pitch to the middle of the order right now. We're going to go with Familia. As Paul Blackburn's day is done. Just could not keep it in the zone consistently. His control was not good. But here is Jouri's Familia. Only six appearances on the year, seven innings. And looks like they've been uh, getting better. The more he pitches. Well, we'll see if that's the case facing Jordan Alvarez and then Jose Altuve, who already has a pair of RBI hits. Off to a roaring start here, missing twice. Up the middle, base hit. And Brantley around third will score from second. It's 4-3. All right, missing wildly with the slider. Behind Altuve, 3-1, and he lifts it for Loriano. And he'll have a play. And then we walk Jose Abreu on four, and Familia's control is really not looking good right now. I think I just have to go with the fastball and hope it gets us out of here. He's not even locating that well enough. Yep, walked Bregman on four. This is great. I need multiple innings from our relievers today. Not partial. Bases loaded, one down. We've had a lead. It's been nice. Two strikes on Chaz McCormick. Let's see if that slider gets a chase. Nope. Missing high, and the bases are loaded with a full count on McCormick. I am not throwing that slider. No chance. On the ground, Peterson to the bag, and the throw in time! The lead holds. Would I have been better off going home there with the first throw for the more sure thing double play? Possibly. We'll pinch hit for Tony Kemp and bring in Jordan Diaz, who has continued to be, you know, worthy of a starting role on this team. I think I gave him the off day here because of uh, energy. But I guess it doesn't matter now. Popped it up, not leaving the infield. They did bring in a new pitcher, by the way, Blake Taylor, the lefty. All right, that's a nasty slider. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, here comes Sam Mull. Lefty's hitting 412 against him. I really need to find some more reliable relievers. That's into shallow center. Diaz ranging takes care of it. Well, here's the lefty Kyle Tucker. Hopefully we can bring down that batting average. It can't stay at 400 forever, right? Two quick strikes. He's actually helping us work quickly here. Oh, that could have been an 11-pitch inning right there. I'll take 12, though. And now we're falling behind. or No, the count's full. Chased it for strike three. Yeah, I can already tell this one run is probably not going to be enough of a lead here in the late innings. 
Diaz cranked to left field and off the wall. He has been swinging a hot bat lately, sliding into second base safely. I saw in his last five games, he's like 13 for 21. There's a double. Maybe we can bring him home. Oh, I think that was our first non-home run hit in this game as well. So four hits now. Trying to make them all count. Up the middle, base hit for Seth Brown. Diaz comes around. He will score, and it's 5-3 Oakland. The goal was five, and we have five runs. Now the goal is to win. Ramon Laureano is already responsible for two homers in his first two trips. What's in store now against the lefty Taylor? In the air, center field, hit pretty well. Back to the wall, no way! A third homer for Ramon Laureano! And our fourth of the game. So, out of nowhere, we suddenly get a three home run day. And the A's lead it seven to three. We finally have something to celebrate. It's one of our best games of the entire season. Did someone put my game on to a uh, rookie? No? Okay. Into right field. Down for a base hit. And Aguilar can run. Oh, he's on his way to second. Aguilar turns the corner. On his way to third. Stand up triple for Jesus Aguilar. That's his second of the year, by the way. Nice piece of hitting going the other way and a risky call there on that extension. Driven to left field and this one is foul. Manny Pena tried to join the party. Just missed it by a few feet. That might be enough for a tag, though. Definitely. On the warning track to bring Jesus Aguilar home for the eighth run of the day. Diaz down the line, and the party's not done. With two down, he will race into second with the two-out double. Can we score ten? Just once this year? Butler pops it up. Well, what an offensive output by the A's here in this game. This is awesome. Strike three looking, and Brantley is gone quickly. Sam Mall pitching into the seventh inning. And he's done a really nice job so far. Let's see if he can handle Alvarez, who can hit lefties very well. Oh, my. Sam Maul, 0-2, almost. Got him looking, strike three. Look at him pumping in strikes left and right. He has pitched 23 pitches, 16 strikes. And he's not missing by much, and his energy is way down. Look at that chase. Wrap it up right here. Nope. A masterpiece from Sam Maul. That's a masterpiece to us anyway. And that's going to bring us to the man of the day for the Oakland A's. It is Ramon Laureano. Three homers already out in front of the slider. I don't know if I've ever had a three home run game on my channel for the show with one guy. Oh, that was right down the middle. No! What was that? A terrible at bat. So four, you know, that's not going to happen. Three's enough, right? Abreu with a hit to right field. 
And on the ground, and that will be a 5-4-3 double play. Seven pitches is all it takes for Trevor May in the eighth. Aguilar base hit to left field. I've enjoyed hitting with him a lot. Up the middle, a slow one behind the back from Altuve to begin the double play. Give me a replay of that one. What an impressive play behind second base. I love seeing some of those turns. But we head into the ninth inning, and we'll keep Trevor May out there, and hopefully he's the one to finish this off. Now, we already have a game in this episode where we allowed five runs in the top of the ninth, so, you know, it's, it's not over. But it's getting pretty close right now. And May cannot finish off the game quite yet. Kyle Tucker works out a walk, and that gets us back to the top of the order. And May can't find the zone suddenly. There you go. That's one. And fouled off. Lifted to right center. Loriano chases after it. And the Oakland A's have won the game. Final score, 8-3. to three. That's probably one of the cleanest, best wins we'll put together in the entire season. I was nervous, though, because Paul Blackburn didn't get the length in this start that I was hoping for. And I wasn't sure we'd be able to pad the lead enough because I was sure the bullpen would give up something late. But shout out to the bullpen for this game because they just went five scoreless for us. Ramon Laureano, three homers, five RBIs. He is your player of the game. And checking out more of the stats here, we had, of course, the four homers and then a triple and two doubles. Lots of extra base hits today. And then a pretty good outing for Sam Mull. Five uh, strikeouts and six total outs. May cleaned up. Familia, you know, didn't allow a run despite allowing three base runners. And we had ourselves a really good day against Christian Javier, a very good starting pitcher. The month of May is nearly done. Next episode, we will get into June. And the draft is only 41 days away now. We are 16 and 39. And next time, I think you're going to see us make some roster moves. I don't think Kyle Muller is benefiting from his playing time at the show right now. And he's got options. And this is what they're for. We'll send him down. Ken Wall the Chuck, 25 years old. Again, we're just not seeing enough ratings getting better. But I'm also not really seeing that for Blackburn. And maybe that's because he's close to his potential at C. The two players standing out positively with their development this year are Ramon Laureano, who is seeing his power versus lefties go up, his contact versus lefties. And then... One very important player, and this is despite not even hitting all that efficiently, Shea Langoliers. Contacts looking up, vision, discipline, clutch. At least he is showing some improvement. But I hope you enjoyed this episode in the Oakland A's franchise. Please leave your thoughts down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for much more of this franchise, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.